We all know the answer. Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. We're called to defend the gospel, and we're called to recognize that false gospels can come from all sorts of corners. It's popular today to label everything gospel-centered, right? Gospel-centered marriage, gospel-centered parenting, I'm waiting for my gospel-centered plumber to come to my house. Now, now I'm not... I'm not denying the importance of gospel centrality. I am saying that throwing the adjective gospel in front of something does not make that thing gospel. We need to distinguish, learn to distinguish law and gospel. Law is do this. Gospel is Christ did this for you. The great commandment Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself is law. The question of Jesus is, what's the greatest commandment? Not what's the greatest gospel message. It's law. Law is good. Law is good. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. Law is good. Law is good. But law is not gospel. Law is not gospel. Another commandment Jesus gives, and it's a commandment that he gives, but it's a commandment toward gospel work, is what we know as the Great Commission. When Jesus stands among his apostles and says, All authority in heaven and earth have been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples. An imperative, a command. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and surely I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. But notice the nature of this command. This is a command to preach the gospel. You make disciples... And the means that are given are baptizing and teaching them to obey the commands. But you baptize those who believe, right? And you baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So implicit in there is gospel proclamation. You go and proclaim Christ's life, Christ's death, and Christ's resurrection. That is gospel work. That is what we call missions. Now, this confusion confusion regarding the gospel has caused a confusion as to what missions is. Missions is making Christ known. And if you see the understanding of the apostles in doing that in the book of Acts, they make Christ known, and when people believe, they baptize them and they organize them into local churches in every instance, save Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. Now, you know, if your deacons... Teleport places and lead people to Christ, great. But if they don't, then don't use that one exceptional case to build a missiology. Missions is making Christ known and planting churches. Missions is not doing good deeds. Doing good deeds is wonderful. Doing good deeds is commanded of Christians. But doing good works is the fulfillment of the great commandment. It's law. It's the law keeping that born again believers rejoice in doing, but it is not gospel work. Further, this confusion regarding the gospel has been promoted in the most prevalent methodology in missions to unreached peoples today. That methodology was originally called church planting movements, going by the acronym CPM. More recently, it's largely become known as DMM, or disciple-making movements. And in disciple-making movements, they teach a thing called, or church plan, they teach a thing called obedience-based discipleship. Perhaps you've heard of this. OBD, that's what they call it for short, is it stands for obedience-based discipleship. I want to identify two major errors, and I mean there are significant errors with this notion of obedience-based discipleship. First, I want to identify the error of obedience
faith-based discipleship's definition of faith. The founder of DMM argued that we're saved by faith. That sounds good so far, right? But then he goes on to define faith this way, and this is right from his book. Faith is defined as continuous acts of obedience. So you're justified by faith alone, but catch this, faith is continuous acts of obedience. Therefore, you are justified by what? Continuous acts of obedience. That will make Rome blush at its legalism. Let me be clear. Faith produces the fruit of obedience. It necessarily produces the fruit of obedience because the same Spirit of God who gives you the gift of faith is transforming you into the likeness of Christ. But faith is not obedience. Faith issues in obedience. OBD's view of gospel ministry is the second part of that I want to deal with error-wise. Obedience-based discipleship practitioners, and by the way, you ought to notice the error right in the name, obedience-based discipleship. Not faith-based discipleship or gospel grace-based discipleship, but obedience-based discipleship. But these practitioners, even those practitioners among the DMM folks who get the definition of faith right, and some of them do, teach that we, here's what they teach, that we lead someone to Christ by giving them new laws to obey each day. So you will meet practitioners of DMM, promoters of DMM, teachers of DMM, who will get the definition of faith right, but then they will say the method of leading people to faith in Christ is by getting together a group of unbelievers with a person of peace, otherwise known as a POP, right? The acronym P-O-P, person of peace. Used to be a man of peace, but that isn't culturally acceptable anymore. It could be a woman, so now it's the person of peace. You get a person of peace who's also not a believer, who leads a Bible study of unbelievers. And I'll deal with this in a more, more in a minute. But the point I want to get at here is the unbelievers, as they read the Bible, they find a principle to obey, and they obey that principle. And as they obey those principles more and more and more, eventually, this I heard one guy who runs 50 missions bases in the world say this. Eventually, the veil is removed. That was the hand gesture he used. It's not mine. Eventually, the veil is removed, and they come to full submission to Jesus Christ. So the way you come to faith in Jesus Christ is by daily obedience to Jesus Christ. That's not what the apostles ever taught or practiced. Ever. That is a false gospel wrapped in a bad methodology. Another ideology on the rise right now in missions is the idea of honor and shame in Eastern contexts. Have you guys heard of that? It's becoming quite popular. We're being told that retributive justice and penal substitutionary atonement, the idea that Christ paid for our sins on the cross, took our guilt upon himself, are really just Western ideas. I'm going to tell you this right now. Whenever somebody throws a whole category of thought under the notion of Western and dismisses it, that's your cue to stop listening to that person. They don't know what they're talking about. 